Hello, welcome to this e-learning module in the framework of Solutions Plus. Uh, today, uh, the course will be on the procurement of uh, electric buses and commissioning. Um, my name is Arno Kerkhoff from uh, UITP, International Public Transport Association in Brussels. I prepared a short outline of today's uh, module. Um, I would like to say a few words on the uh, deployment method that we developed in UITP in a number of eBus projects with the four-step approach uh, around the if, when, what and how to procure. Then uh, I have a part specifically looking on the e-buses on uh, how to define the procurement, the procedure on launching the request for quotation, some uh, suggestions on the tools for uh, tender structure documentation, and we will end with the commissioning of electric buses. When we have uh, here um, yeah, a first approach on the deployment of uh, electric bus systems, it is very important to remember that we are looking uh, to a complete paradigm shift of what we used to do in public transport procurement, where we used to buy diesel buses uh, by batches or by natural uh, fleet renewal. Whereas here we are looking uh, to an entire uh, system procurement. And um, yeah, the vehicle, of course, is part of that system, the electric vehicle, but we should also consider the charging infrastructure uh, and the depot adaptations that need to be organized in um, the tender. So um, in order to facilitate uh, you or your organization in this process, we have developed this methodology on the four steps. And uh, today we will look more specifically to the step number three on what to procure and also uh, more on the process of procurement. One of the most important uh, principles uh, when we uh, approach the procurement is the total cost of ownership. This is mainly um, challenged by the higher uh, investment cost of the electric bus system, including the uh, investment for the charging equipment, uh, the battery replacement during the vehicle lifetime, and the lower energy costs, which makes it interesting to develop operations with a high kilometer load. Um, when we have more specifically um, the question on the definition of uh, yeah, the bus system, it is also very important to uh, start, I would say, not with the electric bus solution, but really to start from the city and the bus operator needs. So this means uh, that it is important to look to the city network or to the bus line and to make a very cautious inventory of the uh, user needs, to collect those user needs and to try to, uh, to, to transform and translate this into the requirements for, for the tender. Um, especially when we talk about city bus uh, network, um, we recommend that all the stakeholders play a role in the, the local system, so-called ecosystem, are uh, playing a part in this uh, yeah, important definition step. So we talk about public transport authorities who often are responsible for issuing the tenders. Of course, the bus operators uh, who uh, are often the, uh, the stakeholder who are purchasing the buses and also have to operate the fleet. And not to forget the electric grid companies and the utility companies that enter in play for the access to the electric grid and uh, the stability of the power supply on the, on the depot. When we talk about starting from uh, the needs, uh, yeah, we developed a small 
I would say, a diagram on, uh, on the development of an EBUS operations that starts with the type of, I would say, energy uh, or uh, propulsion type. Uh, of course, here we are talking mainly about electric buses. And then we go directly to the uh, yeah, timetable needs as they are uh, today uh, practiced with the, with the normal buses. And then step by step, uh, we integrate the environmental factors of the, the climate or the local, uh, the local operation conditions. Uh, we can uh, come up with a first concept of a st uh, charging strategy. Uh, are we aiming rather for an overnight charging uh, at the depot or uh, maybe rather on a uh, opportunity charging method or a combination of both? And this strategy will in the end define the needs for infrastructure on, the, on site or in the depot and uh, also the capacity of the electric grid. And from there on, it is possible to make an iteration of uh, yeah, the need of the number of trips, the need of drivers and uh, the whole financial picture. So this is uh, yeah, definitely one of the, uh, the key elements uh, to be taken into consideration for a uh, definition of the needs before um, defining uh, the product. When the product is defined, uh, yeah, the so-called launch for request uh, for quotation can be, uh, can be done. And uh, regarding the buses, uh, we are speaking mainly on the vehicle uh, purchase price and then for different number of buses. The guaranteed buyback price of an electric bus after a preset period and the maintenance and repair cost related to the yearly kilometer load, commercial speed and topography. I would say these are requirements which are quite standard, which are also applicable for diesel buses. But when we speak here about electric buses, those additional specifications will need to be entered into the uh, request for quotation. Um, the capacity of the battery pack, uh, the specification of the battery chemistry, the battery technology, we're speaking about LFP, NMC, uh, the air conditioning capacity needed on the vehicles, uh, heating technology, uh, heat pump or diesel heater, total number of passengers in relation with the requested seating capacity and important uh, specifications on the energy consumption. With respect to the given specifications, uh, more uh, related to the batteries, the battery procurement conditions need to be put into the request as well as the battery warranties and the warranty conditions. Also regarding the charging infrastructure, it is important to specify the number of the needed chargers, either in the depot or on route, the unit price per charger and the total charger cost, as well as the needed grid capacity and the agreement on the charging equipment monitoring. When we focus uh, or when you focus the launch of the request more on the opportunity, opportunity charging solution, uh, in that case, the public transport authority should indicate clearly the locations where the charging will be possible in the city, including permits to install the infrastructure and permits to make the connection with a high performance grid. And on the tender period, uh, period between the launching of the tender and receiving the bids from the public transport operator should be, of course, adequate. And if it is not the case, the risk of reaching a solution that is less satisfactory is much greater. Where the public transport authority is required to identify the best possible solutions, investigate the feasibility of that solution, and it can yeah, likely take one year to be um, taken into account. Last but not least, the commissioning of the electric buses. It's a very important uh, step uh, once the um, say, selection uh, has been made and then the buses have been procured. Uh, and very often before signing off the electric buses, the so-called pre-delivery inspection uh, is organized. 
And you see here some examples of typical failures that can be uh, constatated in the in the depot when you make the pre-delivery inspection of, for instance, missing safety markings on the uh, the cabling or functional defaults of uh, of components. And um, yeah, this is very important quality step to be to be taken into account. In conclusion, uh, and some final recommendations from UITP in the procurement of EBUS systems, it's important to need to consider all the aspects relative to the introduction of innovation, to develop the partnerships with industry, procuring entities, regulators, and financial institutions, and to define very fair and suitable risk sharing schemes between the fleet owners. Um, also, uh, integrate innovation and technological aspects into the tenders and consider the amortization of the investments in electric bus versus contract duration. Clear specifications with suitable indicators and acceptance procedures, like for instance the UITP eSort, should be uh, taken into account in the bidding book and facilitate the infrastructure deployment processes like depot upgrade and civil works is very important besides the buses themselves. In a nutshell, this was the e-learning um, yeah, module on uh, procurement and commissioning. Uh, I wish you yeah, all good luck with the continuation of the Solutions Plus training. Thank you.